Hi everyone, this is Geezer. Uh, hope you're doing well. Um, so, I just thought I'd do another video um, as I've had a few requests uh, from a couple of different people, mainly around debugging. And I just wanted to show you, I'll give an example of how I go about debugging some of the code that I have. Um, and it's probably going to be quite useful this to um, to sh if you're doing assembler on the on the Amiga, uh, you know or how to use the tools in Win UAE, um, but also in the tools that I've that I use in the uh, Amiga game dev series, uh, which I'll be picking back up. Uh, so I, I thought what I'd do is I've um, just create like a little example, uh, just do some simple code from scratch, um, and. Just show you the techniques and I'll talk you through the techniques I'm going to use to debug how I do it. And the code that I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply display. Just write some code to display some a picture, this particular picture here, uh, using using the, the copper. Um, the What it actually does doesn't really make a lot of difference. The important bit is, is to understand the techniques I'm using to, to debug the code uh, because this won't be straightforward. Um, I'll have to look up things and and do you know and probably take uh, take time out of the hardware reference manual as I do this stream. So I thought I would uh, give it a go, see if it see if it helps people, and um, yeah, just try it and see where we get to. Um, so the first thing to do is this is PPN on the Omega side of things. I've got this is a three twenty by two hundred pixel picture. Uh, by five bit planes, it's 32 colors. So first thing to do, I just want to save this picture. Uh, I'm just going to call it example.iff. So once you've got your picture, do save. Really, really important is to check when you're saving it, this this option here. Make sure that compression and screen format are, are unchecked. Otherwise you're going to run into problems. Um, but what we're going to do is just going to save this to uh, just call it example.iff and we'll save that and then we'll just pick this up pick the file up in on the windows side of things There it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dump it in the uh, current project I've got going, which is Super Sprint, and I'm just going to pop it in Assets. So when we build our code, we're just going to ink bin uh, this this picture here. So the first thing to do is get our code. Now this is the standard libraries that you should be including in your project. Uh, those are covered on the Omega Game Dev series. Uh, so uh, if you don't know what those are doing just take a look at them so what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, add a label and do ink bin uh, assets slash example dot iff uh, put that in quotes and then we'll just put an even things out there so the first thing to do is just save that and save that see if that gets added and it does because you can see the the image size there is the code size has gone to uh, 65k uh, so when we when we debug this so press shift f12 we're going to launch monarm we'll actually see the contents of the iff file and there it is there you can see because it's got the classic classic form header and um, that's the bitmap header color map and that's the color palette here and a bit further down will be the body, and this is where the bit planes start. So, what we're going to do first of all is uh, create a create a copy list, uh, which will simply which will simply um, set the bit planes and the various bits of bits of functionality needed to display the picture. So, first things first. Good idea. Set up some some constants. Screen size X three twenty screen size Y two hundred screen 
we'll call this uh, call this depth so five five bit planes. <clears throat> So first things first, we're gonna um we'll uh well you know what we'll just jump straight straight into it. We'll create some space for our copper. So first thing we need to do is allocate a bit of memory. So we'll do um a move dot L dollar four, which is the exit base into A6, and then we're gonna do a call. Uh, JSR like mem brackets is six and in DO what we want is the amount of RAM and um, if we just add ask for 100 and we'll ask for 1k of RAM for our cover so just comment here load exec base 1k for cover <clears throat> I like mem, and then if we do an e clean exit, RTS. So we save that and can't find can't find mem. That's because it is underscore LVO. I like mem. I think yes, it is. So we need to set these labels correctly. LVO. I like mem. So what we're going to do is just um. Debug that, make sure that it's working. And 400. And it has returned 0 in D0. Now, why might that be? Uh, the reason for that is, is that I haven't told it the type of memory to actually give me, um, which is passed in D, D1, I believe. So we can do a just move to L, then F chip my day one ask for chip ram because this is the copper it must run in chip ram so we'll just try that and we do a debug i'll actually run through what i'm pressing this time <clears throat> so i'm pressing t for trace control t i should say trace and we see exec base going to a6 we see 1k of 400 hex going to d0 and the value twos went in the D1. And then we've made a call to, to the operating system for chip RAM. And as you can see, what's come back now is we've got a value in D0, which is great because that is where the start of our memory is, where we can build our copper list. And that's the classic uh, allocation of RAM that we can see there. So that's good. So what we can do is we can if we just create a pointer uh, copper list and declare a long word and what we're going to do is move the pointer to it into there and that's all there is to that so <clears throat> what we'll do now is we'll just do a BSR create copper list and a routine here and what we'll do is for for ease we'll just say right get the contents of the get the start of the the memory for the copper list into one of the address registers now might as well put this in here zero and what we now need to do is set some set some um display registers which was covered in the Amiga game dev series I'll try and remember them off the top of my head and hopefully it'll hopefully it'll be hopefully it'll work so the thing to do is, is we just create the copper list from scratch now the thing to do is first off is to set F mode um which which has been doing assembler as all well know what that does so we're just going to say set F mode and we're going to shift that by 16 Shift that up in the upper word, and we're going to set it to uh, zero. Although we don't have to see that, but we're going to set that, and we're going to push it onto the start of the copper list. So what this does is set F mode to zero, 
and next what we're going to do is we're going to um, set the data fetch start register ddf start 16 and we're going to set this to 38 which is a standard which is a standard um, size for for that for that register so ddf start and um, we'll set ddf stop zero and that one as well stop. and what we need to do is we need to set the display window start so diw start middle of the word and this I believe is 2C81. That's for a standard window. And DIW stop redirect. It. And then we do, I think it is, ooh, let's just go for F4 and then I think it's D1. That gives us a a standard window, I believe. Um, I'd have to calculate the size of those actually. Um, but yeah. So the next thing to do is set the set the uh, the bit plane control registers. So because we've got five bit planes, <clears throat> what we can do here is let's take a look. So. Do and that DPL con zero. Um, tell you what we'll do instead. We'll just push that onto the copper, and then we'll put the value in a separate instruction. So we're going to say right. We want effectively um, the number of bit planes. And it needs shifting up by 12. And it is plus. Tell you what, we'll cheat. We'll just say it because I know what these values need to be. Um, for a 5 bit plane screen, it needs to be 5200. So let's put in here. Con 0. 32 color screen. And what we'll do is we'll just set BPL con one as well. And next, what we need to do is we need to set the set the modulo. Now the modulo can be calculated. Uh, and the calculation again this is covered in the Amiga game dev series but effectively it is four times well it is it is the amount of bytes on the x-axis times the number of bit planes minus one so what we need to do here is we just need to run a little calculation so I'm going to first say it right BPL one mod plus then move dot w number screen size x which is 320 divided by 8 multiply that by the screen depth minus 1 and is the plus and um, we're going to do the same for the even modulo and that is good so, and what we can now do is set up the bit plane so this can be slightly tricky but we should be able to should be able to tackle it first thing we need to do is find the find the body in the image here so 
you know this is like I say this is quite dirty code so I'm just gonna do it um while it's creating the copper list so what I'm gonna do is just say layer put that in here one and we're looking for a body tag so what we're gonna do is say compare dot long word and we're looking for body comma in year one dereferenced if it's equal and just say go to the body go to the found label if not then add quick two to a one so move on to the next word and then branch dot loop so it's just going to keep going around until it finds the body tag and then what it's going to do is then a one will point to the body tag but then what we need to do is jump over the body tag or jump over the body tag itself and the size so we need to advance a1 onto a1 by 8 so now a1 will equal the the body of the iff so <clears throat> for this copper list we need to set bpl1 pth to equal a1 we need to set bpl2 pdh to equal a1 plus the screen size divided by it and we need to set third bit plane to a1 size times two and four and five needs to be th hopefully you'll be able to work out why why I'm doing that so first things first so we have the we have the um, we have the body in ear one so first thing to do really is to set is to get the bit plane one path or I guess the offset from chip ram into one of the data registers so if we do move dot l and bpl1 pth 16 into d0 and then if we get the body pointer into d1 and then what we're going to do is we're going to move the um so what we're going to do is we're going to swap d1 d1 into d0 and move dot l d0 comma brackets here here one and then we're going to swap d1 now I've purposefully not explained what that's going to do because what I want to happen is I want to debug what I've just done there so I'm going to explain it while I'm while I'm doing this so we have a few errors and which I need to work out why PDF start what is wrong with that illegal relocation Uh, that is because I have missed the bracket there, I believe. Yes, it is. It must be. Yes, I should have brackets around them. No, it's not. Um, Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, can't quite see what's the matter with that. Move PDF start. That looks fine to me. 
And anyway, what we'll do is we'll fix it by by cheating, I guess. Um, I can't be bothered to actually sort it out. I just need to do that. And just split it up into words. Uh, zero comma back zero plus. Values here. A bit of a mix up here. Uh, if we just take that one out. So we've got a problem with one of the bit plane pointers. So this is probably BPL one. Hmm. Uh, probably got the same problem here. I don't know why. Needle relocation. You know what? Doesn't matter. I'll I'll sort it another way. There you are. The reason this is not working is because I don't have the correct include. I have a missing include. So that is the reason and the missing include is this one. <laughs> so all of that code would have actually worked had I included the right that looks a bit better. So it's broken down a little bit further, but it, do, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. So I'm just need to put that local label there. And there you go, we have an executable. So just run it through the debugger and make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. So we've got that code, we've got our pointer to our copper list, and we're going to create the copper list. So the copper list point is going to go into a zero. Uh, so if we use the window and point it to it, we'll see our copper list being created on the right hand side here. So that's the F mode, and that's DDF start. That's 38 DDF stop, and we've got DIW start and DIW stop, and BPL con one set to five bit planes in color. BPL con so BPL con zero and this is BPL con one. And we've got the modulo registers, which is being set to A0, which is 
I know from experience that is actually correct. So I'm just tracing down here, pressing Control and T, and I'm just checking to see what has been created in the copper list. So now comes the time to find to find the actual body, to find um, find the body in the image. So we see that we get that in the A1 register, and I'm just comparing the keyword body in A1 dereferenced, and I'm just adding two to it each time. Now, you can see once the once um, body is found in A1 dereferenced, it's going to jump to this 894cc. Now I don't want to keep tracing that. What I want to do is set a breakpoint, so I'm just going to set Control B at the address and press Control R and there you go. It is found in A1 body and the size of body is FE42 bytes. That doesn't really make a lot of difference for the minute. So we're just going to jump over it and sure enough we've got the start of the bit plane stuff. Now I can tell just by looking at it that that is the wrong, that is the wrong bit plane pointer. Uh, that is the second bit plane, but all the same, we can look at it now. We just loaded the second bit plane pointer offset there. We're swapping in, swapping it up into the high address. We know that that's wrong, uh, but all the same, we can continue on. Now we're going to move the pointer to the body into D1 and swap it over and move, move its high word into the bit plane pointer, and then we're going to add that into the copper list. Swap D1. So yeah, so we've got a little bit of work to do. So this needs setting to zero. And <clears throat> what's probably best is and this is what I was trying to do earlier. If you just set this to the long word instead if you shifted up 16 bits and there's no need to do that so we should get in here we should have 00 e0 that's what the value should be and we need to push that onto the copper list and we're going to swap d1 and We move D1 to D1, D1 out, and then move. D1. Okay, so let's give that a try. So we should be able to set up the first bit plane pointer there right now. What we want to do is we know this code works so we can just jump straight down and set a breakpoint here and we jump past the body and as you can see these d0 has been set to the first bit plane pointer offset and we're just going to move the address in so there's the upper word and we're just going to check our uh, we have a screw up there i should have pushed that onto a0 not a1 so just need to fix that. So tell a couple list. And there you go. So there's the first bit plane point is set. Now we need to go into a loop for the number of bit planes that it has and just re and just go around that loop. Uh, so we'll just do that now. So to set the loop up, well, it's pretty simple. We just need the screen depth. And what we can do is we just simply set a loop going, screen depth, and we use data register D7. And we'll just call this local label there. Uh, what we need to do as well is add another 
move it to the next register and we want to go around the loop. So decrement D7 and go around the loop. And what we'll do for good measure, we'll just end the copper list there. So to end the copper list, just put in minus two effectively. I'll try. Didn't like something and it's not dot. Look at our at the copper list, and you should see that it gets created. Now that is all fine, apart from is that, as we can see, we're not advancing to the next bit plane address in A1. So what we've got to do is we just need to add that. So add L. And if you recall, it is to get to the next bit plane in the interleave. It's just the X size divided by 8. And that should do us. <coughs> Oops, I've pressed the wrong button there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a couple of breakpoints on there, which is done, and then I'm just going to run through this code. And once I'm at this DBF here, I'm just going to run, I'm just going to press Control A so that it runs the loop. And as you'll see there now, we've got the start of each bit plane pointer. There's a copper list, which is great, and what I'm going to do is just end the copper list like that. So now it's a case of simply displaying displaying the image and the quickest way to do that is to set a couple of things. I'm kind of just going to go the quick and dirty route here and we're just going to do layer, uh, let's get the chip base into A5. We're going to turn off the interrupts and all the DMA. And turn off the interrupt request. This is really, really quick and dirty. Um, there is much better ways to do this believe me uh, but this is about how to do the debugging um, and what we're going to do is enable some DMA so to enable a, a DMA uh, slot and um, to en enable some DMA you have to set the bit so the top bit to either clear DMA um, is in bit 15 so if you set bit 15 if you want to clear uh, a particular value um, or a particular bit and if you want to set a bit you you actually set bit 15 so we're going to set bit 15 uh, which is so we're going to start with an 8 which is bit 15 and I'm going to need to look this up because I can never ever remember them um, but we can do that we can do that in a short while <clears throat> and what else I'm going to do here I'm just going to do a wait for a mouse mouse click so I'm so that's just going to wait for a mouse click now to kick the copper into life what we need to do is we need to find it get its actual address which we already have in here and pop it into DO and if we then move DO into cop uh, 1 LCH let's see 5 and we need then need to strobe cop jump one. So 
Move.w and the zero comma cop jump jump one to execute five. So that will start the comma. So comma new address. So once we've done that, we'll just move this down here because we actually stop the copper's DMA here. And what we need to enable is the copper DMA and the bit plane DMA. So I'm going to need to look that up in the hardware reference manual. Um, let's see, I can never remember what it is. So it is bits. So the copper is bit 7 and bit plane DMA is bit 8. So that looks to me that it will be uh, 8 there. And a one there. Uh, yeah, so just document, I'll just write a comment that. And it'll bit in and copper DM here. Okay, and give it a compile. Well, first time. I thought it's going to work first time, but you never know. So we'll give that a shot, see what see what happens. So because we're taking the system down here with these with these three instructions, we're basically stopping the system. We can't use Monam to debug anything, so we have to take a bit of a different approach from now. And we can use the WinUA debugger for that. So let's just see if the let's just see if the code works first off, and we get anything. And we don't because that's typically always what happens. <laughs> so we've got to figure out kind of what's going on so what is going on now first thing to do is to take a look in the WinUAE debugger if you press shift and f12 this will pop up the debugger and first thing first things first if you press c you'll get some status information as to what is going on where and the important bits are generally round about here so the first thing to do is we make sure our copper list is working so this is our copper list pointer here 86 bd8 so we can de disassemble that list by doing 4 and then 86 bd8 this is the copper list that we set so we've got um our Looks like this copper list is fine. Okay, so it's saying that it's pointing this image to 75D8C. So we're going to take a little look at that in a second using another using another tool. So 7D 75D8C. But this for me seems to be okay for now. Can't see any obvious errors as to why why that's kind of broken for the minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I've actually got the action replay loaded in this, which is really useful. So we know we've got an image in RAM, so we just need to check that. Also, the action replay will tell us where it thinks that the bit plane pointers are, and what we can see is that. There is something actually on screen, and I'm just needing to change the modulo, which I'm doing now. Hmm, interesting. Oh, there we go. There is an image. So it seems we have a problem with the. It seems we have a problem with the modulo somewhere. And possibly the color palette. Um. So what we can do is 
we're just going to check the color palette as well so if we go into the UA debugger we can do E8 and look at the color palette and this has shown the first 32 values in the color palette now as you can see we can actually see something in there which is which is fine uh, but we still can't fathom out what is actually what is actually going on here so a little bit more experimentation needed I think DDF start has been set, DDF stop has been set and we've got a valid copper let's just check our DM here So DMA con R is one eight zero, and I'm pretty sure that that was right. I'm just going to double check. That looks right. The planes look good. They're pointing to the right place. But the action replay thinks that there's something, something wrong. Mm. Take another look at that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to check what the actual size of this image is in the IFF file, um, because something does not look right there. Um, so if we debug again, what we need to look at is the bitmap header. Some, not something not quite right with the header. So if we look up the, what the bitmap, head, bitmap header, header should look like, this is the structure here, and we bring up one arm. So the so we have an unsigned word. 170 by 170 so that is 368 which is wrong it should be 320 and 11B is 283 so it looks to me like the picture is screwed up so I think what, what's required here is back into ppaint and fix this picture so let's just take a look and image format and there you go you can see that there's a problem there the image needs to be 320 by 200 i have no idea how that's happened um, uh, interesting 320 by 200 20 by 200 um, yes I want the current format yes I want to stretch it alright doesn't matter what the picture looks like now but so we're just going to save it again call it example.iff ok 
um, back into and just to overwrite that one. So let's give this another shot and just see what it looks like again. So we fire up the action replay and picture one. Oh, there we go. We have a picture behind there somewhere. It's just for some reason it is not it's not showing and this is probably something to do with this is probably something to do with which where I'm taking down the system and so what I'm going to do Yeah, I'm going to cheat a little bit for the sake of time and just have a look in, in the hardware reference manual. See how this is actually set up. See what it is that I'm missing. Maybe this. So uh, perhaps this is the problem. Maybe I'm not strobing the copper properly. Um, this, that will help. Maybe not. The image is definitely there. And if I was a betting man, I would say that that is something to do with it looks like the DMA. So I'm gonna go with I'm just gonna try setting this value here which is the DMA enable for DMA bit. DMA enable all bits and try that and see what we get. Hey, there we go. And there's a quick display of a, an image. Now, when I press the mouse button, nothing's going to happen because I've killed the system. So, one other thing that I wanted to show you, which is a really neat trick. In the WinUA debugger is the mem watches. <clears throat> Just show you this before I go. And for the mem watch stuff, what I'm going to do is it's really useful. This what I'm going to do is I'm just after the mouse click, I'm going to clear a really low address, say 100, and when I launch. When I launch this with the system up, now obviously when I click the mouse button, nothing is going to happen at all. Okay, um, so I'm going to launch it again. This time, while it's waiting for the mouse button, I'm going to set a watch point. I'm going to say, right, create a watch point zero at address 100. I'm going to look for two bytes. And anything that writes to it, we want to know about it. So this, so we're saying create watch point zero at address 100. This is uh, the number of bytes, so that will cover bytes 100 to 101, as you can see here. Any write, so you can have you can have read operations, write operations, or all I think it is, and all means. Um, whether the blitter or the CPU or the copper overwrites it, all of it, so you can distinguish between different 
different ways that this might get overwritten. But I'm just saying all for the for the argument's sake. I had a real problem in Rygar when uh, I had I had a blitter operation that was corrupt in memory, and this is how I was able to get around that. Um, I was able to find that it was actually a blitter operation that was causing the corruption. So I just run it up again, and if I press the mouse button, you'll see that it's kicked into and stopped exactly at the point where the clear 100 is. And from there, what you can do is you can just carry on and execute the code. So that was it. That's what I just wanted to show you. And hopefully it's been useful. And you know, just showing you the debugging techniques. That was the whole point of this particular exercise. Hope you found it useful. If you like the vid, um, you know, click click the click the like button. Um, I don't normally say that, but you know, why not? Everybody else does. So that's me over and out until the next till the next video. Hope you like it, and I'll catch you later.